Hello, my name is Cecilia and I'm a part of this 3 ds program called Who Can Become a Producer. I used to tutor the program in Gothenburg, but now I live in Copenhagen where I produce music. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how you can use field recordings in your productions. I hope you enjoy it. So first of all, I want to talk a bit about how you can go around capturing your field recordings. And I like to go for what some people call a sound walk, where you just go for a walk, grab your recorder and put on your headphones and then just uh, follow whatever sound you find interesting. I use my Zoom H1 recorder, but if you don't have the a recorder, you can also just use your phone. And if you don't have a windshield, I would also recommend using a sock or some kind of fabric just to cover it. So here I opened up an old project, which is a track uh, where I used a lot of field recordings. So now I actually deleted the field recordings so that we can uh, make them ourselves now. Okay, so there's three ways I use to work with field recordings. And the first one is to make a drum rack. So I go into instruments over here to my left, choose drum rack and drag it down here. And then I have a drum rack down here. Then I can drag down the sounds I like down here. So I'm going to choose these two. And the sounds I'm using now are from, they're actually quite old, but I think they're just from some random walk in the woods. So it's like twigs and stuff like that. Sound like this. And like this. And as you can see, especially this one is quite long. So I want to select a part of it. Maybe this one. Okay, so let's take that part and for this uh, okay, and we, I want to use this part of the sound. Okay, and if you want to use this as a a kind of percussion, I recommend that you make sure to cut off the beginning of the sound, because then it'll make it easier to uh, make it tight. Just have a look. This is quite tight. Okay, so this is one way to arrange your uh, field recordings. Another way is uh, using the method called slice to new MIDI track. And for that you just uh, drag down an audio file in your project. And then Ableton creates a new audio track for you. This sound is a very long recording of an electric kettle, which is way too long for what we want to use. So I'll I just shortened it down a bit and then you right click and select slice to new MIDI track. And OK. So what this does is Ableton now slices uh, your audio file up into 26 in this instance, 26 uh, clips. And uh, Ableton creates an instrument rack over here. And then you have all your clips here, which you can trigger uh, using your computer keyboard or an external MIDI keyboard, for instance. So that's a way to work uh, or to arrange your field recordings. Um, the difference between the two uh, methods is that for uh, the drum rack, you have more control over the length of your uh, samples or and what parts you want to use. Uh, and uh, when you use the slice to new MIDI track method, Ableton decides that for you. 
You can still go in and click on the individual clips and uh, decide how long you want it to be if you don't like uh, the randomized selection. But I think sometimes this makes something interesting. It, it often becomes a lot more glitchy, I think. So let's just delete this track. We don't need that anymore. And head on to the last method, uh, which is making a sampler. So we go into instruments again and select sampler and just drag it down here. And then you have to drag down an audio file into your sampler. And just like I showed you with the drum rack, we now have a quite long audio file down here. So we have to select what part of it we want to use. Let's see. Okay. So let's choose that part. The good thing about working with the sampler is you have a lot more control about uh, how the individual sounds are manipulated. Because if I want to add an audio effect to this uh, track, it will only affect this one particular sound. So for instance, if I want to add a uh, delay, you can hear that it of course affects the sound bite. But if I did the same thing uh, in my drum rack, This affects both sounds. Of course, I, you can still go into the individual sample here and do a few edits in the controls and sample panel. But for adding audio effects, you have a lot more control when using the sampler. Uh, for when I work with sounds that are quite similar, for instance, uh, this electric kettle. It's okay, I think, to to use uh, an instrument rack or a drum rack, because then it's okay for me to have uh, the same edit on all the sounds. But if I, for instance, wanted to make a kick drum and a snare out of my field recordings, I would prefer to have them on two different tracks. So I would probably make two sampler tracks and just drag them down to one each. Okay, so let's just um, so let's just uh, try and add some more effects to the sampler trick. I'll just delete this one. Um, when working with field recordings, I and then I like to really s make a selection. Uh, of what frequencies I want to enhance. Because you can really manipulate the sound into being uh, something very different. For instance, I can decide that I want this to be more high pitch or more low pitch so let's try and go with this then I want to add a compressor just to level out the frequencies a bit Adding a compressor is also a way for you to enhance uh, very quiet recordings, which is pretty useful when you uh, work with field recordings. And then maybe I want to add, uh, let's choose a vocoder effect, because this really often changes the sound quite a bit. Let's see, I want to use the modulator. Move it less. Oops. Okay. And 
then lastly I want to add every verb So now I didn't go too much into the different effects, but this is just to give you an idea of how you can easily change the field recordings quite a lot and make it sound like something very different. Yeah. Okay, so let's just record a little bit of this. duplicate this mm. there we go and then I have a break here so I'm just gonna delete this one let's have a listen Okay, so let's move on to my electric kettle. I'll just add a quick EQ to this. There we are. Let's see. Okay, and a compressor. Actually, I want to shorten this down. So now this becomes almost like a machine gun or something like that. Let's go ahead and record. Okay. Just gonna go down and quantize this a bit. Mm -hmm. Right, that's here. Okay. So I like the rhythm in the last bit better so I'll just move these so that they match great and duplicate it oops
Okay, so now I want to add a delay to this one. Here. I actually quite like that. Okay. Great. Let's hear it all. together with the drums. So as you can hear this adds some maybe more organic feel to the drum kit but it it also sounds like it's a part of the drums and that's that's what I really like about working with field recordings that you can you can use these sounds to make your own drum kit. And if you um, use them together with some more conventional sounds, one might say, uh, I think this makes quite a nice mix. Now we have a few examples of how you can work with field recordings. So that was a few ways to work with field recordings. Of course, you can also work uh, with field recordings in a more melodic way. And uh, for that, I just want to show you a quick example of how I made uh, some uh, synthesizers out of some vocal samples. Uh, for instance, if you listen to this one. So if you have a look down here, you can see that this is the sample and I only <laughs> I chose this little bit of it then I added a compressor, vocoder and some delay and an EQ and some reverb and uh, an utility too so quite a lot which uh, made this sound so maybe if I just unclick all of this we might be able to hear how it sounds without any effects. So that was just a quick example of how to work uh, to make synthesizers out of field recordings. In this case, it was a vocal sample. Okay, so I guess that's all I want to show you for now. I hope you found some of this useful. We'll be back again next week with another tutorial. These uh, tutorials are supported by ABF Gothenburg. Thank you so much for listening.